recording these sessions. So if you, um, so please keep it clean, Marty, because every <laughs> time we, we record these things. Should we all put on ties, Rafi? I, <laughs> yes, especially Dylan, because I think a, tie, a blue and white tie would go well with his Yankees hoodie. It's a little and cold down there, sorry. That, that's actually one of my questions, uh, one of my bonus questions to, uh, to, to David regarding attire at, um, at meetup these days. You know, how should everyone? <sighs> that's been a question I've been facing when I deal with a lot of people who get on calls with t-shirts and jeans, clearly. Right. Oh, oh, no, David, you. <laughs> David. I'm, not, I, 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 I'm David. Zoom bombing here. No, no, David, you gotta put on a you gotta put on a meetup shirt. Uh, agree that do what you love, but that's a work shirt. That's no, don't that's tell anyone. anyone. We'll see, I, tell anyone. <laughs> if you can't read Hebrew, then you're not gonna get oh David. Is that Yiddish? What David is that? Like, Hebrew. It's, it's Hebrew. I know, but what does this what, what does it say? It like Yiddish. It said it do vos something. So say it, let us see it again, David. Yeah. What is that? It's, it's Hebrew letters, but it, it spells out the English words Dalit Vav Do. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> you love. Oh. Which is, actually, which is actually a WeWork shirt. I just happened to have, have, have worn it last night. And, uh, and uh, I, uh, don't, I didn't dress as nicely as Rafi did this morning. <laughs> no, no, no. I, David, I didn't want you to wear a suit and tie. I wanted you to wear a meetup shirt. Okay, hold on, hold on. I'll link you up. <laughs> you want me to get it? I, what do you mean, get it? My, my question was how many meetups? I'm not sure I understand. Oh, I have literally like 50 of them. That's my question. Thank you for exactly. answering. Don't worry, don't worry. Hi, Don. Good morning. Um, so I am going to be putting in some links in the chat. Uh, I'm, I'm, right now, everyone is unmuted. We're not going to start because I, I got to put in some of these links. Uh, and just to give you guys the, the early risers, or I should say the people that are on time, uh, <laughs> we're recording this, uh, number one. Uh, number two is uh, because David and uh, Eileen have to leave at 9.30, we're going to jump into uh, some Q&A with, um, with David and Eileen and, and, um, and meet up. Uh, and then we're going to jump into the workshop. So... so um, that that is the that's the agenda. Uh, so the first thing that I'm starting out with is everyone. Uh, we we're based in New York, but we're going to get into this. We're based in New York. Some of you are not in New York. Um, um, put a link to Governor Cuomo um, uh, in the chat. If you have a question, uh, just ask it in the chat. We're going to be a small enough group that we can handle all of this. Um, Number two is everyone should be familiar with uh, John Krasinski um, from YouTube, Some Good News. Is everyone familiar with that? Mm -hmm. uh, the, yes. No, you're supposed to say, no, I'm not familiar. So that, no, I'm not familiar. Okay, good, <laughs> thank you, Don. thank you. Oh, if you're not familiar, let me put a link to Some Good News. <laughs> John Krasinski, the actor, uh, has these great, um, oh, my light's off. Can anyone see me? Yes, yeah, Don stepping up. I like Don stepping up. Thank you. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Now, now I feel like I can see myself. Uh, that's okay, go on. Number two. Uh, number three is Jennifer Mursky is on the line. Thank you, Jennifer. Can you say hello? Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> Where are you, Jennifer? Uh, she said, "Did I do I have her unmuted? Wait, let me uh, let me see if she's muted." Ah, uh, okay. Can I oh, admit, 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 and unmute all? Okay. So uh, Jennifer is in. I, I'm giving a special shout out to Jennifer because she helped us put together this program, um, and she's a colleague. Thank her for that. Um, the next person I want to give a shout out to uh, who has helped us uh, is uh, David Edwards of 
Heron Wealth. Um, David is in the financial industry, and he uh, he's been a great um, he's been a great voice of leadership. Uh, and I really um, and I think that at this time we have to find our specific uh, local leaders as well as our national leaders. Um, and then a shout out to my partner, um, Marty. You want to say say hello to everyone. Hi, everybody. I'm Marty Katz, and I'm the founder of Connectors 360. I'm a marketing consultant. I've just launched, launched uh, Mindful Clarity, which is a meditation-based program for executives. All right. Uh, that next person. And then the last thing I'm going to uh, show off is if you want to get in touch with me, you can get in touch with me through Meetup, uh, but you can just check out rafisalem.com. So, uh, so I'm going to mute. Um, well, it, it, we're a small enough group. I'm not going to unmute it. unless someone. I don't need to. I don't need to unmute. I, David Edwards, uh, I just gave you a shout out for being a leader during this time from a financial industry perspective. David Edwards, thank you for joining us. Hi. Uh, Hi David. So. I think we have enough to start. Uh, and uh, first of all, David Siegel, thank you very much for joining us. Um, uh, how many meetup? Okay, now for the record, I see you're wearing a meetup shirt, David. As it's a magical, meetup. magical. How many of those shirts do you own? Well, we, I probably have at least twenty, maybe thirty meetup T-shirts. My daughter. Uh, who you know, Rafi, um, will only sleep in a meetup t-shirt. <laughs> I've been walking around in a meetup t-shirt right now, and where I went to get this was I quickly went into her bedroom because she basically <laughs> pulls on meetup t-shirts. For some reason, the material is ridiculously soft on these t-shirts, as Eileen, who works at Meetup, knows, and they're the most comfortable t-shirts out there. So, um, you know, one of the best, best things about being a tech CEO is uh, you could kind of just wear your wear, wear your t-shirt to work every day, and I probably do that half the time. And since I've been working at home, it's a lot more than half the time. I actually, I actually, one of the things that I've uh, I've been most proud of about about this this time right now is that I haven't worn a pair of pants in about five weeks. <laughs> what? Yeah. Is that something that the CEO of Meetup would like to? Uh, admit in a public forum yeah, let's not put it on twitter but but it's just uh you know you gotta you gotta have some some good things during this very very challenging time in the world and uh my good thing is just wearing shorts all day every day and when i go out and go running wearing shorts and when i'm in the house i'm wearing shorts and all right so so that's actually a david that's actually a great segue you and i have known each other for a number of years and i remember bumping into you um early morning on an early morning train like I want to say six, uh, between six and seven a.m. Mm -hmm. Where are you going? And you're like, well, first I go to the gym. I, I always go to the gym before I go to the office, or I try to go to the gym before I go to the office. So in this whole stay-at-home um, pandemic, how are you keeping in shape? And I guess you're not going to the gym, but what what are you doing to keep yourself uh, in shape? No, no gym. Though I I do have right here a copy of my credit card. Bill, where I circled, if you could see what this says, New York Sports Club, because they're still charging me. I'm really pissed off about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to call them up and find out what's going on there. That, uh, that is so, a good that is, You have to put it in dispute. I've already been in touch with them, and they, they didn't respond. And but they, eventually, after sort of being non-communicative, they put out some information saying, like, eventually, once they're back operational, they're going to start crediting people. But I was advised by credit card just to put it on in dispute. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Thank you. I'll, I will do that right. for mine. I have to so, say, I thought the state had said that they have to, re, uh, have to refund. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Hence okay. my, my lividness about my $69 per month that, that, that I'm paying there. So, okay. So, yeah, Good. I have a pretty, uh, I, I would say five days a week I, I, I go to the gym and I exercise. It's definitely been like very hard not exercising, not going to the gym. I find that probably the best investment I can make in my time is exercise because the amount of energy that I get from exercise uh, more than compensates for the amount and efficiency that I get from that energy 
more than compensates the amount of time I'm actually even exercising. So it's like you literally gain time in your day by exercising. So uh, during this time right now, I have actually said, said to my wife yesterday, I said, I've never felt more in tune with the weather. So first thing I do every morning is I wake up and I look at exactly when the highest peak um, uh, kind of sunny slash, um, you know, slash warmest time, time of the day is like, I can tell you at about 5.30 yesterday was the warmest time in White Plains, New York. So whenever the warmest time happens to be, whether it's, you know, in the morning, afternoon, e later in the evening, uh, I'm going to usually go running or outside. Um, so that's one thing, just going on, doing a lot of running. Fortunately, I have a treadmill in the basement. So doing that as well when I'm indoors. Um, but then I found, I found that I was like atrophying my entire upper body. It was like atrophying since I hadn't been in the gym in so long. So um, I bought some weights and I'm trying to use those. It's, it, I don't really have a, a great solution except for to say that um, it's extremely important to maintain exercise, I think, during this particular time. It's probably more important than ever. Um, and any ways people can find out how to do it. I've also probably spent 20, 20 minutes a day or every other day doing yoga and just kind of meditation and breathing just because I think that's a healthy thing to do. Good. Okay. So uh, because we've only got you for about 20 minutes. Um, I'm I, I, could go, I could go, by the way, till 930, 938. Good. Perfect. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, so number one, uh, thank you all for coming. Number two is we're a small enough group. We are 19 participants right now. I don't see anyone else waiting in the, in the waiting room. So that's good because we had uh, a, lot, a lot more RSVPs. I'm not going to jump into that about Meetup. How, why do so many people... That's it. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is not an ambush. This is absolutely not. Good. Um, but what this is, is uh, David and I did a little prep. And we are a business development uh, Meetup. Uh, so we're not a recreation group. So uh, my very specific four questions for David, and we'll go through them one by one, is branding and awareness. So because we're a business development meetup versus a recreational meetup, how are we supposed to differentiate ourselves from other business groups who are doing similar things in other cities and countries around the world now that meetup is an online reality versus a local, in-person, New York-based group? Right. Okay. So a couple of things, Rafi. First is, if you're okay with it, let's do that question. And then we could ask other people if they have questions and we could switch off between your question and, and, and one of their questions. Just, just I'm happy to, to, to do that if you're, if you're so, down with so it. So I, 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 I'd rather not have people all yell at the same time. So the best okay. thing to do is put it put in, in Q&A or chat. chat. Right. Sounds and, great. And then, I'll and then you it. choose. Perfect. Right. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, thanks, Rafi. So very quickly, I also just want to give a quick overview of what Meetup is. So just, just so I'm sure everyone knows it because you're using it. I'm at a Meetup right now, which is awesome. But just as context, uh, we have about 330,000 groups around the world. We're in 193 different countries. We have 49 million members of Meetup. Um, until about four weeks ago, we never ha we had almost no online Meetups. We really didn't 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 want them. In the last four weeks, we've had over 150,000 online Meetups. We've just were recently sold as a company out of WeWork. Um, and we're now pivoting the business for this period of time in the interest of safety um, to online meetup um, experiences. And we're seeing a, a huge number of growth around that close to 2 million RSVPs just in the last four weeks um, and attendees of online meetup groups specifically. Um, getting to Rafi's specific question now. Um, I mean, my take is that there's really, first I would ask the question of, of um, what the goal is of differentiation. So if the goal of differentiation is to have as many different people as possible, then that's one goal and that might, might involve a different approach. If the goal is to um, help a smaller number of people but like deeply help those individuals, then that's a different approach. Um, that's kind of, I don't, I don't need an answer, but, but I think the first question to ask is what's the goal of branding and differentiation that one's trying to achieve? Aside from that, taking that separate, I would say two things. One is that ultimately uh, what you find is that because it's going, is business development is a broad topic and there could be thousands of business development groups, frankly, on, meet, uh, on Meetup, I think the success will come from being as 
clear about your mission and as clear about uh, kind of your niche as you possibly can. So if your um, charter is extraordinarily broad and there are lots of different types of people, either celebrate that and say, you want to join this group <clears throat> because we're at the intersection of the following different areas and people are interested in these three different areas and not just marketing or not just tech or whatever um, can benefit from it. But I would say the more that you're able to carve out a very specific like mission of the group and niche of the group, the more successful you're going to be. And the more that you just potentially could appear as like a jack of all trades, um, potentially the less successful that could happen. If you have specific success stories as well that have come out of this group, whether it's business development programs, whether it's people getting new jobs, whether it's people getting clients from this, mm -hmm. then the more that you could call those out um, as well as part of your branding efforts, um, I think also the more successful um, you could be. And the last thing I would say around it is that ultimately kind of content is king and it's all about kind of the experience. And one of the things I love, Rafi, that you did in the beginning is you introduced some of the new people that, that, that may not have been on before. Um, I think that's super valuable. Um, I think you're just such an affable person and you're, you're, um, you're, you're, you're a wonderful facilitator. And I think just, just your hosting kind of, uh, kind of skills um, has been a big part of why this group has, has, has succeeded and been around for a period of time. I think you're able to create a, a dynamic where people care about each other and ultimately people attend meetups because they feel supported and they feel that people genuinely care for one another. And, um, and it's, it's about that more so than, um, you know, big vanity metrics type, types of things. So if we're able to create that one-to-one -one type relationship with people and build the relationships between people, then, you know, that's an incredible branding and incredible experience. Thank you. So uh, second question, I think you answered in terms of enrollment. So now what specific direction can you provide? But, uh, but what I really want to get into is our third question of um, our membership is largely based in technology, finance, and marketing. Do yeah. You have specific advice regarding those specific uh, industries. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, okay, so background here is I actually grew up in business development. So I ran business development at Duane Reed, the pharmacy chain, right after I graduated from business school. And then I ran business development at 1-800-Flowers uh, for a while after I was at Duane Reed. Um, so I, I've, I've been doing business development actually for a long time and I don't know, hundreds of different kind of big partnerships. So I was thinking about this when you sent me the question. I'll, I'll share like three or four kind of things that I think are particularly important when it comes to business development slash partnerships. Assuming that you're referring to when you say business development, the, the partnership or relationship between companies component, not necessarily the sales, because business development can mean lots of different things, obviously. Mar Marty, you wanted to correct here yes. with, with your- Yes, a a absolutely. Uh, what ha the way we define business development is the development of long-term relationships that uh, produce results that benefit both parties. It's not sales. Uh, it's really about how do organizations, as you just described, link to each other and provide value to each other. For instance, Rafi and I are, have separate businesses and we have a business relationship relationship that is an example of this particular meetup that we're having right now, plus other work that we do together. So it's how do, how do organizations find other partners with whom they can ally to yeah. develop uh, uh, outcomes that benefit both parties. Okay, great. So I have, I have four or five kind of very specific thoughts on things that I, I've learned, shall we say, in doing business development deals and kind of here they are. Oh, the first is that a high percentage of business development deals, um, as you all know, because you've been a part of probably collectively like hundreds and hundreds of them, have lots of conversation and then never end up actually turning into anything. And the, the key question is how do you not move forward deals, but how do you um, quickly kill deals as fast as possible that have a low likelihood mm -hmm. of ultimate success? And by killing deals quickly, 
and that's true in sales, by the way, also by killing biz dev deals quickly and ascertaining whether or not there's likely going to be enough of an appetite within your organization and the partner organization, it allows you to free up a lot more time to then focus that time on deals that will actually end up succeeding. So I guess point one is kill deals fast. And I learned that because I'm a very optimistic type person. And I would always try to push deals along and push deals along, push deals along. And I would put enormous amounts of time into trying to push those deals along. And it was just wasted lots of other people's times and my own time. And I should have done a much better job of realizing that, that um, trying hard and pushing hard actually is a detriment sometimes, um, if not done the right way and for the right reasons. So that's kind of point one. Point two is the deals that I have found that end up actually turning into something over and over and over again, uh, uh, exhibit the following characteristics. The first is that there is some form of dollars or revenue being exchanged between people. So I have found many times that an organization, another organization will, will kind of discuss uh, an opportunity with each other. I'm sorry, I'm not giving you a concrete example here. And, and that opportunity um, will be like, we'll give you our email marketing list. You give us your email marketing list and we'll email market together. And there's maybe something there. But what I found the ones that actually persist for longer periods of time is that there's actually like someone paying someone for something and, and um, or both parties paying each other in, in some, for some, in some arrangement. But the exchange of dollars frequently leads to far more buy-in by the company who is actually receiving those dollars. This is kind of obvious statements, but I've almost, made every biz dev deal at this point kind of said okay how can this help us to directly grow revenue or how can we help you to directly grow revenue and if it's about how can we each help each other directly grow revenue typically that ends up um, um, actually potentially meeting the light of day and a contract being signed and there's implementation so i think a strong revenue orientation to a business development deal is is, is, an, is very important the second is that what i found is most business development deals die because there is too much um, tech work that's required by the partner organization. How many, how many of you have seen like a business development deal they're involved in and then, and then it gets to like the, the, the engineering department of the product team and they're like, we can't do, we don't have, this isn't on our product roadmap. We don't have time to get this done right now. Like just show of hands. How many of you have, have had those kind of experiences, right? It happens like constantly. Because the, the engineering, there's, there's oftentimes a, just such a long backlog of things that people want to do. And then what happens is, as you've seen, you know, maybe the CEO likes some idea and it gets jumped to the top of it. And then there's resentment that builds up mm. and then people get really angry at each other. It's just, it's all kind of gets very ugly. So what I have found is that I typically will start off a biz dev deal and say the following. The more this could be about revenue for you or us, the more successful this is going to be. The least amount of engineering effort that actually has to be put into this, the more successful this is going to be. Um, the more that we narrow down um, to one specific way in which we could work together to start and not work for on like six different big ideas and just keep meeting and prioritizing around six things, the more successful this is going to be. And the more buy-in that we have from the most senior person in the company um, to, towards this, the CEO, a C-level person, the more successful is going to be. So if you, if you put in, if you're very clear about the success criteria, you're very clear about what the goal is that each side is trying to achieve and not the 10 different goals, because when you have 10 goals, you have no goals. Like what the one specific goal is that you're trying to achieve or the other partner's trying to achieve, the more successful you're going to be. Long answer, short question. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Last, last quick question uh, for me is, um, I'm seeing a lot of overlap between uh, between what's happening right now, stay at home, work from home, work on Zoom, et cetera, between LinkedIn uh, and uh, what LinkedIn has achieved and where uh, and where Meetup is going. So uh, yeah. Yeah. a convergence, do you see collaboration? What's, what's your take on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Meetup groups? 
Yeah, sure. Okay, first I'll talk about Facebook versus Meetup because we've, we, we've been, quote unquote, not really competitors, but Facebook groups to Meetup has been definitely competitors for quite some time. And, and I'll tell you, during, we were sold two weeks ago, <laughs> three weeks ago out of WeWork. Um, and, the, and we probably had 50 to 100 different conversations uh, on due diligence. And almost every single time, one of the questions was, can Facebook just eat your lunch and Facebook can make Meetup go away and, and not exist anymore? Why, why do people want to use Meetup when they could use Facebook? And, and the answer that we have found in talking to many different organizers is that Facebook, now again, this unfortunately, you know, you, you don't want your point of differentiation to be all about in person these days, but it is the reality. So, so uh, and it's true, what, what many organizers have told us that they sometimes have both a Facebook group and a meetup group, um, and they could help, they could assist one another, and it's not necessarily mutually exclusive. Um, and I, I, I don't have a problem with that, that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, so it's not necessarily one or the other, but what we consistently heard was that Facebook is really good for online and digital connections. Um, Meetup actually gets people to show up. The Facebook brand is not associated with people actually getting out of their houses, out of their offices, and actually showing up. Meetup's brand and association is fully about getting people to show up in person. Not a great time right now to talk about that, but it is the reality. And we're gonna get back to that. And I'm not worried whether it's in a month, two months, three months, whenever it is, we're gonna get back to it. So, so that was the big differentiation. And uh, consistently we, we would be told that we had a higher percentage of people showing up than others. Typic typically our show up rate, by the way, across all of Meetup is 50%, which is not great, it's not terrible, it's 50%. Um, other organizations, uh, what I've heard from Facebook, Facebook groups is that it's a much lower percentage. So that's, that's that. Now in terms of LinkedIn, I think that what they're, LinkedIn is a very interesting company. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if LinkedIn at some point looks to acquire us um, because of what they, what, the, what, what they're focused on. They're definitely focused more on building groups. And uh, at some point, actually, I'm going to be talking and doing a business development deal potentially with LinkedIn uh, that could help meet up to, uh, to grow more significantly. So we are actually going to be reaching out to some senior people at LinkedIn that I was introduced to during the sale process, actually. Um, and see what happens from there. So I know we only have a few minutes left, David. Uh, Dylan Cohen asked, uh, how do you go about identifying those initial one to two objectives going, going back to what we had? And then yeah. uh, Dawn Moore came in uh, with, a, with a couple of questions. How do you see the future of virtual events once COVID-19 recedes? Okay, so, so Dylan, Dylan. Hey, Dylan. How you doing, man? Go Yankees. Yeah, Good. <laughs> uh, so, so here's my answer. Rather than asking the business development person um, for what, what they think would be successful, instead ask them for what, what, the, what the top company priorities are for 2020. Most companies will have, here are our top, or functions will have, here are our top three objectives. So the reason why I like doing that is because the business development person may have their own opinions about what's important. And that's fine and dandy, but like, I'd rather find out like, what's the number one or number two or number three stated, listed, documented objective for, for the organization. And again, mo like at, at Meetup, we have um, three OKRs, three ob objective key results that we have for 2020. And any business development deal, we, we wanna share what those are so we could see how, um, what we could do can actually directly fit into the company ones. And then the, the reason to do that is because then it allows you as a business development person to frame the partnership in the full context of what the company objectives happen to be. And using, and I, I'm a big fan of like using language. If you use the exact language in your framing of why a deal will hit the objectives that the company has, then it's gonna be much more persuasive because you're, you're, you're kind of quoting back the same words that the CEO or, or CFO or COO happen to have put together as, as their kind of company priorities. Now, then, then you know, there's the typical objective exercise where, where you, know, you put together, here are the five objectives that we could do, and here are the five objectives, and the key is just narrowing it down to like literally 
the one that they can help the most with. And what I typically will say is something like, okay, lots of companies can do lots of different things. What's the one thing that your company is better at than anyone else? Just like, I love that question. And when you hear the one thing the company is better at than everyone else, it usually will open up a, a very interesting conversation. Oh, I can give you this. I can give this marketing. I can give the email. No, what's the one thing, and only one, that, that's better than everyone else? And then you want to try to get them to help you with that one thing. And then you also say, here's the one thing that we're better at than anyone else. Okay, in terms of, what was Don's questions? Uh, so Don said, how do you see the future of virtual events once uh, COVID-19 recedes? Yeah. So what, what, what our plans are at Meetup, at Meetup specifically, Don, or generally? That was- um, Both, how about that. both? Okay, sure, okay. Uh, let me talk about Meetup specifically, because I think it'll be similar to generally. So at Meetup specifically, there's going, there's going to be kind of three different types of events. There's going to be in-person only, that's for sure. There's going to be um, online only, which we're going to now allow, and I'll get into that shortly. And there's going to be hybrid events, which I think is where Meetup is really going to be differentiated. So unlike Facebook groups or whatever it is, which is their focus is on, on in-person, wouldn't it be great if we created a lot better tools for organizers and experiences for members to, in the kind of online offline event experience. So if, if people are running a panel, um, the tools that we have are not, let's say a tech event running a panel are not like as helpful to be able, you can't just throw the laptop out there and just video camera. It's just not a great experience. There, there are tools that we can provide to organizers that are much better tools for hybrid online offline type events. And we see ourselves kind of carving out a much greater niche there uh, around the combination of the two. And I think there's, there's definitely a uh, opportunity there. In terms of why online is still gonna be very, very important to us in the future and probably to others, I'll share the four reasons very quickly. Reason number one, two of them are for or benefit organizers like Rafi and Marty, and two of them benefit members like all of you. So here they are. If you're an organizer and you want to have a global footprint and reach um, people in different countries and cities around the world, and that's your interest, like let's say you just wrote a book and you, and, and you don't have a local bent, then there's a big benefit to, to more broad, uh, broad um, uh, online global type events. So that's, that's one for an organizer. The second for an organizer is that one of the things I've been wanting to do for a long time is to connect organizers to other organizers. Like I want Rafi and Marty to be able to be part of an organizer business development group where they can meet the organizers across business development groups across the world and then have relationships with them and they know who they can help within their areas. And, and if, and if, Rafi and Marty know that Dawn has a certain specialty in XYZ, and they're in a group of, of, of uh, kind of 100 other meetup organizers of BizDev meetups, then they can help the members even more so, and they can learn even more of what other people are doing that could become great content. They can hear about speakers that are even better. All that could be much greater facilitated through online, organizer, organized actors. Now, in terms of members, there's two real benefits. The first is that many individuals that I know live in more remote areas or live in suburbs um, where there isn't necessarily as many as many meetup uh, events. We're in 2,000 cities, but we might have only a few in whatever, 20 or 30 in White Plains, whereas we have, you know, 2,000, you know, in New York City. But a friend of mine lives in a, a remote area in, a, around kind of greater Toronto. He, he's a parent of ADHD kids. Wouldn't it be great for him to remotely being a, be able to connect to other parents of ADHD mm -hmm. kids? Um, remotely because there's no meetup in his little tiny town that he happens to live in. So, so it, it helps there significantly in terms of people who live in more remote areas. The last benefit is for, in, for members. Um, the other one is that if an individual has a very specific like niche interest in a, a very specific topic, like, uh, uh, laughter yoga, whatever. That's just a real thing. Is is anyone do laughter yoga ever? Lauren has done it. Okay, I, I did. It. I did it too. It's kind of fun at the Omega Institute, actually. In yeah, me bed. too. I've been. I'm a trained leader, although I'm laughed. Whoa, cool. Oh, right. whoa. Nice. <laughs> we okay. get a little so, ho ho ha ha ha. <laughs> exactly. So so I have I I don't think that there are 
uh, that many laughter yoga meetup events, probably. However, Loring, if you wanted to create a laughter yoga meetup experience as an organizer, it would be a lot easier for you to find people using the, uh, how many people are there in the world? The 8 billion people in the world or being able to access the 50 million people across the world than just the, the specific local area where you happen to be in. Um, so for very niche topics, for very specific topics, online can open up those types of, those types of um, experiences even more for people. At the end of the day though, um, we do fully intend to be, to stay with our focus of in-person. Um, I always say we use technology to get people off of technology. I can't really say that right now since we're on technology. <laughs> but now I'm saying we use technology to continue to keep human connections, which is what we are doing. We are connecting with each other. We're getting to know each other as humans, as opposed to, you know, the evilness in my mind, uh, sorry, of like, you know, other types of, of social, social media where it's, it's, lacking human, it's lacking human connections. It gives oftentimes people the, the perception that it really is a human connection, but really it's a screen connection, not a human connection. So hopefully, Don, that answers some of your questions. All right. I can take one Thank you. One. Right, right. But, but before you take your last question. Yeah. I need everyone to think back to that laughing yoga because I'm trying to take a screen capture and I want everyone to smile or <laughs> or, or something and uh, hold your cheese. Cheese. Yes. Cheese. All right. I, I think I got a good one. All right. Okay, awesome. good. Thanks, Rafi. Last, last um, question. What, last question, yeah. Anyone? Anyone? Did we not answer something? What's the difference between event bright and meetup kind yeah. of thank you? Sure, very, very big difference actually. So Eventbrite is focused on selling tickets. They're a ticketing company. They they sell paid tickets for the most part. They have some free free events. But for the most part, um, there'll be a big rock concert and that's where they make most of their money. Not rock concerts specifically, but like someone will um, they, they, they'll want to sell tickets to a concert, tickets to uh, shows, whatever it is, and you can do it through Eventbrite. They also have, uh, have free, um, but ultimately they're a ticketing platform to provide tickets for organizers. They have very, very little number, very, very few number, uh, very little consumer direct reach. Most of their relationships are with event organizers. So what we have is, and they're a publicly traded company, you look, look them up, the stock ticker is EB. I'm currently shorting them, by the way. I don't know anything <laughs> in, in, about them, but you know, not a great business to be in right now when all of your revenue is tied up to getting a percentage of tickets when there's no events happening. Um, what, what we have is a 40, 50 million people that are part of our meetup kind of consumer network. Eventbrite had actually hired someone to try to build out their big, a big consumer bit side of their business um, they let that person go. We actually hired that person to find out a little more about what they were doing and they just can never really succeed there. So, um, uh, that, there's a, there's a, that's, that's kind of the major difference. We also have many small groups. The average size of a meetup event is like eight to 10 people. Hmm. Whereas event, Eventbrite's business is usually on average much, much, much larger events. Hmm. Thank you. All right, uh, David, thank you so much for, for joining us. I really appreciate it. Let's give a round of applause or a round of muted applause. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Also, I just want to say thank you to Marty and Rafi for inviting me. Um, thank you, Marty and Rafi, for everything that you do, not just obviously in helping to support Meetup, but more importantly in helping to support all of each of you and working with each of you. And thank you, all of you, for being a part of kind of Meetup and our ecosystem. The more that you build great experiences for each other, kind of that's all that we care about. And I'm hoping that that continues for many years to come. Thank you for the opportunity to meet and thank you for your questions. Take care, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thanks, hey, everyone. Yeah. Big we smile, please. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye. You. You. All right. So now I've got about seven screen captures. I'm recording this all. Marty, why don't you take it away? Um, with telling uh, and telling what we normally do in these workshops, three rules of marketing and maybe a couple of examples. Go ahead. Right. So this typically is a group that meets for about an hour and a half. 
Uh, and the first portion of this is about, is a workshop. And in this workshop, it's an opportunity for people to craft their message so they can connect uh, better with their target audiences. That's what I do professionally in Connectors 360. And, there are, and, and the purpose is to talk really about the target audience. And so out of that, I've developed what I call the three rules of marketing. And so the first is nobody cares about you. And it's very hard for people to understand that because it, they, it sort of seems to degrade who they are. The fact is nobody does care about you. And the second thing is they will only remember the problem that you solve. So if you tell them about all the stuff that you have done and what you do and your processes, it, they won't, it's hard for them to remember that. They, they need to know exactly the problem that you solve, which is resident in them. They're not interested in your solutions. The third thing is they're not going to do the work to figure it out. If you give people a lot of information, they have to sift through it. So these three rules are things that become the, the cornerstone of the development of a message or a brand that is able to stand out in, in the competitive space that we all work in to develop uh, relationships that generate awareness, engagement, and, and sales leads. That's what this is all about. Can you so, repeat the third rule? The third rule is they won't do the work to figure it out. The first is no one cares about you. They would only remember the problem you solve. And the third thing is they will not do the work to figure it out. So typically what we do is we go around the room and everyone gets a chance to stand up and present themselves. And I guide them through this uh, so they can maybe learn something from it. And after that, we typically have networking. Now we have, I think, how many people on the call? We have 19 people and we have 19 minutes. So there's probably not enough time for all of us to take a turn. So I, 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 I would I would say Marty, let's I, I like we discussed before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think everyone should take thirty seconds. Yeah, absolutely. Themselves. Yeah, and then it. if there's time after, and if you would like some uh, some great tips from Marty, uh, I would say stay <laughs> in line. Um, but why don't we? Uh, yes, that's that. Yeah, everybody should take a short period of time, thirty seconds if possible, just to state the problem you're solving for whom. So I, I'm gonna, I, I'll, I'll let you know and I'll, I'll unmute everyone. So just according to my screen, because we all don't look at it the same. Um, so Joshua, you are the first one. I'm unmuting you. Unmute yourself. Uh, please introduce yourself. 30 seconds, then I'm gonna cut you off. All right, so my name is Joshua Conrad. I'm the founder and director of JC Surge. And we work with senior managers of local business owners and the problem they're usually having is that no one's really finding them online. And this often leads to them feeling, you know, frustrated and confused from all like the online marketing options out there. So our goal is to empower these local business owners to feel like they can control their marketing and actually see, you know, traffic come their way to their website and get more phone calls. And this is a client. This is a client. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Very well Michael, you want to take yourself up? Michael Ritz, you want to take yourself up? Oh, yeah, Mike. No, nope. you mute. Mike. He's there. He's clicking. All right, Mike, we're, we're going to get back to you. Dylan Cohen, um, you're I'm next. In. Oh, Michael, you're up. Hi, I'm Michael Ritz, work with Lennox Advisors. Um, my typical client is uh, busy professionals who don't have time or the resources to pay attention to their own personal financial planning. All right, that was short and sweet. Dylan Cohen, then Brian Hunt. Nice to meet everybody. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm a senior at the University of Buffalo, currently taking my classes online. Uh, during my sophomore year, I started a business selling products on Amazon and have learned a lot about digital marketing uh, through doing that. Uh, recently, in the past six months, I've been working with uh, small business owners and helping them with other forms of digital marketing, such as building websites, uh, email campaigns, and other, any other sorts of online funnels that they could use to increase traffic to their site and drive revenue. Um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, in a short form. What I did. All right, Brian, you're up. Okay, um, Brian Hun. I am an advertising creative director, copywriter, uh, newly on the market as of about two weeks ago, unfortunately. Um, been in the business 20 plus years, worked at places like Digitas and Ogilvy and Gray. 
um, across traditional and online media, uh, a lot of direct response marketing. So most much of my work has been focused on demand generation, driving leads, driving sales, customer conversions, things of that nature. So happy to be part of this group and uh, would love to work with as many of you as possibly can, uh, whether it be a resource for you guys or a partner uh, directly with you or just be somebody who's on your roster of people that you work with. Very good. Um, so uh, just a note about the fact that some of us do uh, similar things, the fact that there's overlap. Uh, I, was with, I was in another Zoom call the other day saying, you know, we're all working from home and there are billions of people out there that we can all help. There's plenty of room for collaboration. So never freak out that, oh, someone else is doing exactly what I do and, I'm, and this isn't a good call for me. Always think about collaboration. So with that, Loring, then Dawn, then Colette, please. Hi, I'm Lauren Forsh. I own a CBD company mm -hmm. called Pop.NYC. I manufacture everything is all natural, sustainable. Check, check, check all those boxes that you feel good about your purchase. Uh, we're bootstrapping it. I'm thinking about uh, going into a funding round right now. We've been in business for about two years and uh, I've got no money, but it's a really fun and exciting time to work in cannabis <laughs> and health and wellness. And if you're interested in learning about the industry and, and have some time, I've got two little kids and no time. So <laughs> I'll, uh, I'm happy to, to collaborate <laughs> with no money Perfect. exchanged. I'm like Perfect. what our meetup friend said. So, so Lauren and Loring, so Loring, you go next, then Dawn, then Colette. Okay, hi. Um, I'm a senior marketing and brand executive, brand management executive. Um, I've most recently been with a company called Rail Europe North America. Um, it's a division of We SNCF or the SNCF National Railway of France. Um, they're an online e-commerce, um, basically planning and ticketing um, platform for European train tickets. Um, I was recently um, downsized. There were about 34 of us let go back in January. So um, finished up a big project where I was unifying the sales and marketing budgets and um, putting together the marketing plans for the year, as well as launching a new digital app um, for travel advisors. So I, my career's also had me working with um, Kraft Foods and Sargento Cheese. I've also worked on the agency side of the business at Match Marketing Group, Gray Advertising and so forth. So. Um, I'm in the market, so I'm um, refining my list of um, companies that I'm interested in working for in the industries that I'm looking to move to uh, when things return to our new normal. Very good. All right, Dawn, then Colette. Hi, my name is Dawn Moore. I'm the creator of the <clears throat> predictive method. I'm a business wellness coach, and what that means is my team and I look at the health of a business as well as the health of the people in it. And we work with busy business executives and entrepreneurs responsible for revenue growth. The problem is they don't have enough sales. And the reason is that their team is basically ineffective. And this leaves these executives feeling unheard. So what my team and I offer is the predictive solution. And it has three components. It's sales strategy and training, Marcom, which is marketing communications and wellness. And when people work with us, they are able to crush their revenue goals, feel on fire, and inspire results on their team. Don, thank you very much. Colette, Jennifer, then Alexander. Hi, my name is Colette Connolly. I'm the owner of Connolly Communications. I'm a copywriter, and I typically work with small businesses. And I like to... Um, focus on website copywriting more than anything else, even though I've done lots of other things. Um, I find that lots of small businesses have, obviously they have websites, but many of them are not great. Uh, they don't convey the right message. And uh, the problem basically that I solve is that I'm writing the words for businesses, for business owners who either can't write the words for themselves or just are not able to. Um, I have a background in education, um, school communications. I worked on school communications for many years. Um, and I also have a travel uh, a blog that I created myself. Um, I'm sure many of you can tell that I'm not from here. I'm originally from Ireland and I have a blog um, that I also maintain and that I'm uh, in the process of monetizing. So in addition to my other business, I do that as well. Uh, it's in my LinkedIn profile, it's called irelandonabudget.com. So if you guys have any desire to ever go to Ireland, please check out the site. 
Thanks. Thank you. Jennifer Alexander, David Edwards. Hi, everyone. I'm Jennifer Mursky. I have a company, Mursky Digital, and I am a content creator. And I work with individuals and business leaders who are responsible for growth. People are not aware of who they are, and the audience is not engaging with them. And foremost, their content is not representing them powerfully. So that's where I come in, and I work with them, and we tell stories that matter and which emotionally resonate with the audience and engage the audience. Thank you, Alexander. David Edwards, then Dimitri. Oh, hi. Sorry, I wasn't prepared. Uh, hi, I'm Dmitry. I'm originally from Russia, live in New York City, in Manhattan now. Uh, I work for company SpinGeek. We help restaurants, uh, the most effective industry now. And right now we're helping them with marketing and digital online uh, solutions so that they could keep going their sales, their businesses in these hard times. Very good. Alexander, then David Edwards, then Patty. Hi, my name is Alexander. I'm CEO and founder of a software development company. So our clients is C-level uh, managers and the startups. Right now we are helping companies to set up operation remotely. So it's, so we're very busy if you have, it. so we have a few different applications that, uh, mostly every company needs so it's very easy it's uh, no time to set up this in one two days we can set up that you could operate your business remotely very good thank you david edwards patty and joseph good morning i'm david edwards president of heron wealth in new york city uh, we work with uh, two kinds of clients we work with uh, executive families typically a million dollars in investable assets and up and we also work with rising professionals, younger families in their late 20s, 30s, and 40s, hoping to get to a million dollars. Uh, it's been an interesting time for our business. Um, we've added about six new families in the last five weeks. People have a lot of time to work on their financial plan right now. So um, we've been working flat out. Very good. Thank you, David. And thank you for being a friend and uh, helping us out during this time. Uh, Patty, Joseph, and then uh, Jay offers bound in new. I don't know what your name is, but uh, Patty, then Joseph, then Jay offers. Hi, everyone. I'm Patty Caballero. I'm the founder of PSC Consulting. I work with mid-sized companies who to help them overcome communications issues that are holding them back from growing their business. This could be general awareness. This could be a misperception about their products. It could be an issue that's actually negatively impacting their business. I'm a communications and PR professional. I've worked in-house and in agencies. The work I do is primarily in the healthcare sector, whether it's with pharmaceuticals, small pharmaceuticals, manufacturing, uh, health insurance, pharmacy benefits, a variety of of areas in the healthcare sector. My work actually goes beyond that, but majority of my work has been in healthcare. Very good, Joseph. Good morning, everyone. I feel like uh, one more marketer in the room is a good thing. So uh, <laughs> I, uh, I run marketing for uh, startups. I'm currently working with a company called Kettle Space. So we help, um, before this, uh, provided drop-in workspace. Now we're providing a virtual community for <coughs> And consultants and freelancers who don't have a corporate connection of group of people so similar to this they can connect with others um, basically helping uh, startups grow so marketing guy thank you Jay offers what's your what's your real name Jeff Jeff uh, sorry 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 Jeffrey Boudin right That's, and, and, uh, and everyone who who came in late please share your uh, LinkedIn your <laughs> in the chats I'm gonna to put together a Google Doc uh, and then we could all connect that way if you missed it from the chat Brian Hun was quickly copying and pasting um, so you don't have to do that anymore but everyone should share that if we're not connected already so Jeff and then Alicia and then Jennifer you have your hand raised go ahead so uh, I run corporate challenge some of you may know from the JP Morgan Chase event uh, they are licensed to produce uh, the four-person runs. I, I produce off-site events, uh, primarily for CXOs, um, for training and development, and most of my clients actually 
uh, participate because we can put them face to face with their top prospects as well as their existing clients. It's a very cost effective set of uh, retreats. Very good. Uh, Alicia, I don't see your video and you're on mute. Uh, <laughs> you want to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Alicia. I'm the founder of a medical apparel brand for nurses. We're called Moxie Apparel. Um, we're launching with Moxie Scrubs this summer. And the problem we're solving is that nurses are the largest segment of the healthcare workforce and they have no direct to consumer brand focused solely on their needs and no brand that gives them a sense of fashion and professionalism and respect that they deserve. So we are here to address that need in the market. Very good. Thank you. Um, so I, I am Rafi Salem. I've worked with about a quarter of you throughout my career. Uh, oldest, uh, uh, oldest friend and colleague is Joseph Katz. So uh, we started working together in the 90s. Um, but more recently with Marty and David and Jennifer. So but most of you, most of you know me. If you don't know me, um, I work with uh, executives and companies and corporations, any size business. Uh, that has negative content uh, or is experiencing unfairly repre unfair representation on Google. So the question is, what happens when people Google you or your business? Is it positive? Is it negative? Do you want to change that? Uh, so rafisalem.com is where I have all my information. Uh, repu uh, digital reputation management. Uh, best partners for me, best introductions are PR firms and PR professionals, so let's get together the PR people on this that don't know me, uh, as well as law firms that, uh, that specialize in litigation. Marty, take us home. Well, I wanna thank all of you for coming today and uh, for, we all had this great opportunity to listen to David Siegel, which was a boon, um, I think to all of us. I think he spoke very articulately. He, I think he's a phenomenal leader. Uh, uh, I, we're going to have these uh, these meetups every month, as we always have had for May, maybe more often than than every month. We might do it every two weeks now. Okay, maybe if if there's, if there's enough interest and demand for sure. Uh, we Rafi and I believe very strongly that this is the time for us to develop, nurture, and grow our relationships with each other, even with people that we know and we already have business relationships with. Uh, this is the time that we can do that. We think this meetup form is a great way. Uh, in the future, we'll have much more opportunity to do the workshop portion since we only had just a short period of time uh, to do that. And I welcome the opportunity to work with all of you and uh, learn something about what I do professionally. And because of the situation right now with the, that we're all facing, I'm very happy to work with anybody who's interested for no charge for the beginning portion of my uh, eight-step program for communications and, and, uh, and messaging and branding. So if you're interested, I will work with you for no charge or whatever you wish to pay uh, for the first couple of steps to get you started uh, so that you'll be able to refine uh, your, your messaging and your brand so you can uh, generate more interest in your businesses. You can let me know. Good. So, uh, Marty, uh, you, Marty, as this started out as a workshop, but workshop slash networking event, if anyone would like to stay on um, for another, what do you say, five, 10 minutes, Marty? Uh, Marty and I can help you with your brand, with your message. Uh, a lot of people are already way, way ahead. Don Moore, you are exceptionally awesome. Don. Uh, and what you do. Josh Conrad, Josh Conrad, Don Moore, Jennifer Mursky, you got it all down. Right. So is, if there's anyone that would like some advice on their brand, their message, their pitch, uh, raise your hand and Marty will do a quick one to two minutes with you. Jeff, Jeff, you have your hand raised first. I'm not ready yet. Oh, you're not ready. I, I, but next time I'll be prepared. Oh, next time. Does anyone else want to want to jump in? Uh, anyone raising your hand physically, not 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 clicking the Zoom. Dawn, you're up. I just, I just want to give a shout out to you and Marty. I had the privilege of coming into New York a couple of times to work with you both. And just the clarity that I was able to get from articulating what I do and you hearing me 
So if any of you have a chance to work with Marty and Rafi, I strongly recommend you take them up on this free offer. It, it's not always <laughs> offered for free. It's never offered for free. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so take them up on All it takes is a virus. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Next Jennifer, pandemic. you have your hand raised? Jennifer and then Jeff. Oh, sure. Just very quickly, I wanted to second what Dawn said. First of all, Dawn, beautiful background. I, I think you definitely get the, the trophy for your background. <laughs> I, I would agree. That's really choreographed. Thank you. I do a lot of Zooms, a lot of interviews <laughs> lately, a lot of podcasts, a lot of uh, TV that's going up on YouTube. Well, it's terrific. And you all have to check out my friend Ellen's really great piece uh, on Medium, actually, all people's backgrounds and how she's obsessed with everyone's bookshelves. But anyway, I just, <laughs> I just wanted to quickly uh, second that. Uh, Rafi is fantastic and just incredibly generous and an amazing networker and really good at everything that he does. And, and Marty with the messaging is just, you know, on a, a level unlike anyone else and, and it's invaluable. So thank you. All right. Well, as we have turned this into a uh, everybody Love fest in Rafi show, <laughs> um, I'm going to say thank you. It's it's ten o'clock. Uh, you know, I, Marty, you and I discussed this, but didn't finalize this. I think there is demand to do this more than once a month. Um, the question is, are we going? <laughs> I guess this is the question for David Edwards. David Edwards, are we going back to work? Are we going back to the office on May fifteenth? No. <laughs> no. Um, no, I don't I, I don't want to sound like a horrible pessimist, but while the death rates are still rising nationally, we're not going back to work May 15th. Um there is a, a lucky break for white collar workers. We're all working remotely. And um you know, for for my business, uh we have not stopped our marketing. We're actually going full tilt with Marty and Raffi. Raffi on the digital side, Marty on the copywriting and messaging side. And we're increasing our marketing spend and stealing business from other advisors that are hiding under their desks right now. But I've told my team that we're not going back to 42nd Street until either we can get a blood test that says that we've got the virus already or we can get a vaccine. And that could be September 1st, December 1st, 2021. Um, the other question I get a lot is, are we gonna go into full on uh, depression with bread lines and people selling apples out of barrels situation? The answer is probably not because uh, the key difference between the, the Great Depression and now is that Hoover uh, was a businessman who said, well, if we don't have tax revenue, we can't spend. And so uh, cut uh, federal spending by 80%. And that's what turned a conventional recession into the, into the Great Depression. Here we have the opposite situation. Uh, we've had three or four major spending programs already, two, two trillion, three trillion. There's a new program coming out uh, this afternoon, uh, once the House votes on it, to throw another $300 billion to small business people. If you have not applied for that PPP loan yet, uh, you should. Uh, you can ask me about how to do it. Uh, we've, we've been advising, we have 35 business owners among our clients. We've helped them apply for I've applied for it myself. Um, but no, we are not going back to our conventional office lives anytime soon. Okay, thank you for the bleak uh, update. No, I, I would uh, say actually, I would say actually, David, thank you for the direct and an open uh, response to that question. Uh, I don't know that all of you know David, but uh, he is a formidable uh, thinker and leader uh, that uh, doesn't focus only on his own business, but has a broad perspective on what it's like to be in society and in business simultaneously. So he is, a, is a, somebody who I look to because he has a great perspective about what it is that we're doing, not here, only here in the pandemic, but even before that. Uh, so I want to acknowledge you for uh, the way that you approach things. Uh, talk about the skipper. Um, Remember about 99% of the time is the AM. So my, my hobby is, uh, is sailboat racing and, and I was never in, in the military, but when you're the skipper of a sailboat, which might have a crew of two or five or 16 people, uh, 
you want to win the regatta, but also you have the safety, you have the responsibility for the safety of your crew. And, you know, if you're not careful, someone could get their arm ripped off. Um, so um, preparation goes into it, but also um, what we call situational awareness. Are things have developing that you need to be aware of? And, um, and that skipper mentality came into play um, in the last three months. Initially, I was optimistic that this whole uh, coronavirus thing was going to be no more significant than SARS or MERS or other, or, or even Ebola. Remember Ebola? Two, two fatalities. Mm-hmm. Um, I put out a bulletin uh, in uh, early March saying, no, we don't think this is going to be significant at all. And I turned completely on a dime on March 14th when I realized that my initial analysis was wrong. And a skipper is the kind of person who understands facts. And when facts change, their opinion changes also. And, um, and when you look around our leadership, you look at someone like uh, Mario. Um, uh, Andrew. Andrew. <laughs> uh, Andrew. Sorry, wrong Cuomo. Uh, he is a skipper. He gets it. And you look at someone like Trump, he is a fraud. He does not get it. All right. The dog uh, obviously agrees. Um, <laughs> that was barking in the background. Uh, so thank you, everyone. I, I, think, I think we're all good, right? Wait, Jennifer, is that, are you fixing your camera or, or anything? So once again, thank you so much, uh, Marty Katz, for being my partner in this. Zoom meetup, business development leaders. Uh, I am going, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be organized and I'm going to record that. I, I already recorded it. I'm gonna post this at bizdevleaders.com. Uh, I'll make it all available. I'm gonna create a Google Sheet so we'll all have each other's um, LinkedIn and hopefully we can be there as a resource uh, and, and help to everyone else on this call. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye now. Win the day, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Good.